Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over how to do the At One Machine Lab. Alright, so this lab is from a website called the Physics Aviary. Um, it's a really cool website where the, the simulations run based off of the, the physics equations. And um, it's very hands-on. You could, you could adjust a lot of different things. Alright, so if I click here, where I start the lab, uh, you'll see there's a couple of options. So before you, you see the At One Machine itself. Okay, so there's uh, two wheels here that are frictionless and you have uh, masses that are attached. All right, now in a normal classroom setting, we would have done this lab uh, just like this. We would have two hanging masses and we would run the simulate or we would run the, the lab by um, letting the masses um, be pulled based on uh, which side has the heavier weight pulling down on it. Okay, so with that being said, a uh, couple of options. You can adjust the masses. Okay, you can even see that the, the sizes of the masses do change based on um, what you create your masses to be. So if I want to make it smaller, it gets smaller. If I want to make it bigger, it gets bigger. All right, so the, the one thing is, is that you don't want it to be the same mass. Uh, it's because if the two masses are the same, if I click run, nothing's going to happen. Right, because the forces of gravity cancel out on both sides. So I'm going to make it smaller. All right. Now we can expect, um, because mass 1 is more massive than mass 2, the force of gravity is pulling on this side uh, a lot more than on the right-hand side. So we can expect mass 2 to rise while mass 1 falls. So I'm going to click Start, and we see that. Okay, so this is great, but I'm going to go down here. Um, and when I go down here, I see that there's a position versus time graph that is created. That's wonderful. Also, um, they created a velocity versus time graph for you as well. And this is based off of the, the simulation. Um, now, for your lab, what you're going to do is you're going to collect the data that they produce. So if you just highlight and you can copy and paste it somewhere. Uh, but when you do that, just know that the first column is for time. The second column is for position, and the last column is for velocity, okay? Um, and this is in standard SI units. So what this means is that uh, at time 0 0.03, it was at position 0, .0 um, with a velocity of 0 0.046, okay? So uh, it was just starting to move. And we can see how um, as time moves on, the position changes and the, the velocity also changes. Uh, a couple of things to know is that you're going to be picking different points throughout this data table. Um, and when you pick them, make sure the data points are spread throughout. Okay, You don't want to pick the first 10 right here. That's not going to give you that beautiful curve that they have. All right, So just pick them throughout. Um, and know that some of them, they do repeat, like here. Okay, So you don't want any data points that repeat. All right. Okay, so you're going to go to Google uh, and you're going to create your position time graph and your velocity time graph and you're going to analyze it. Okay, um, the other thing that I want to show you is you can get the same masses but change it. So um, what I mean by that is you can change the, uh, the situation that we're on. So this is something cool that we don't get to do in the classroom. So if I were to do this lab on Mars and I click start, we can see exactly how that affects our data. Okay, so that will be for part two of the lab. All right.